All right, heading off to Portland, going up there for the Sportsman Show. It's supposed to be a pretty big deal, one of the largest in the Pacific Northwest. Can't wait to see all the stuff they got, all the things I like to do, play outside. Yeah, yeah, gonna go up there, spend the night. It's Friday night, spend the day over there tomorrow. If I really want to, I'll spend one more day and enjoy the show Saturday and Sunday. If not, I think I'll head down and uh, see about checking out the Mackenzie River or something. Maybe doing some camping somewhere on the way back. It's a, a four-hour drive, so I've got a lot of choices between here and there. But either way, it should be an exciting show. Hopefully, I'll be able to show you what's going on there. And uh, if that event comes to your town, maybe you want to check it out. Anyway... Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the video. Here we are. We've arrived in Portland at the Roadway Inn, Jansen Island. I hope I'm saying that right. Don't know for sure. Not a local. That's why I'm at a hotel. Anyway, so far, i got to say I like this place. So let me give you a little tour. Coming in the front door, you come up on the bathroom. This is a handicap room. So as you see, there's no bathtub. Got this handy little stool in here and this shower head. It's got dual shower heads though, that might be nice. I might have to try that out. I'm definitely gonna try one of them out anyway. And then, you know, your rest of your amenities. Pretty nice there, nice and clean. Little deco lighting. Not the fanciest place, but not the worst either. Updated recently, as you can see from the, the marble here, but then you have Spots like this little tear in the carpet here. It's just a bad seam. Whoever laid out this room just didn't do a very good job. Last place you want to seam, same problem over there. But other than that, this room's pretty nice. Got a nice bed, seems to be comfortable. That's my pillow over there on it. A couple lights, some artwork. And of course, what hotel room wouldn't be complete without a TV and a mini fridge and microwave. Little desk area here. Nice recliner in the corner. And uh, I'm on the ground floor, but yet I have a really nice view. That is Vancouver, Washington. Overlooking the Columbia River. Take that bridge over to the next day. this in the morning. I don't know what that is over there, but it looks to me like it's a construction site. There's a crane that's lit up really cool. Oh no, got morning light. military jet and have something I'm not a, a pro when it comes to that stuff f15 f16 whatever they're calling these days but they took off from over that way and pretty much you're going straight up over this hotel so if you stay here say good morning to them boys like I did but here's the view from out the door of the hotel like you saw last night and I was right that is a construction site with a crane Looks so pretty at night. Still kind of cool during the day, of course, so I'm into that kind of thing. But in either case, that is Vancouver, Washington. Even from the bottom floor, I got a pretty cool view. More of the industrial harbor over there. I'm actually on an island in the middle of the Columbia River. Really cool location. Well, 
I did the sportsman show. I don't know how they can call it a sportsman show, to be honest with you. It's more of a fishing boating show. A very good fishing and boating show. But I wasn't really going there to find uh, fishing and boating stuff. I really wanted to find camping and hunting gear and you know maybe some canoes. They didn't have one canoe or kayak there for sale. Crazy. Sportsman show. Hmm. They had all the attachments in the world you can put on a kayak. All that kind of stuff. Plenty of displays and things like that for kayaks. But nobody's selling any kayaks. Oh, I'm sorry, I take it back. Hobie was there. The most expensive kayak company for the value was there. Anyway, so Sportman Stroh's done. It's about 3 o'clock in the afternoon and I'm trying to decide where I'm going from here. I guess I'm head south and see what what I might find. Cabela's in Portland. It's a cave bear skull. Well, I'm here at Shampo Campground. Sorry I didn't film anything for you, but I got here just as the sun was going down. Got my fire going, my chair set up. Camper's over there. Got a little half-assed tarp thing. I'll have to show you that in the morning. This is where we're calling it a night tonight. Nice fire. Just kidding, there wasn't no coyotes, that's a recording. So I'm enjoying this beautiful full moon here over my shoulder. The way the clouds and things are just kind of circling around it and swirling. It's really making it pretty cool. It's all reminiscent of the king tide that's here. So the moon is actually closer to me than it ever will be. This year anyway. And that causes huge tides here. Uh, up along the coast, even into Washington, I believe Alaska and stuff has a lot of problems with it too. To the point where the federal government has asked people to take pictures of all the flooding and the tidal surges and whatnot and send them to a website so they can research and see what coastal erosion does because more coastal erosion will happen this weekend than probably in the next three or four months uh, just because the amount of tides and how high they are. I know in my hometown, our main highway, Highway 101, will be under a couple inches of water. It always is. Um, sometimes up to six to eight inches last year. Um, they close it and you have to go around. It's kind of neat. But hey, it's Mother Nature. She fills up our bay and fill overflows onto our roads and sometimes into people's houses, unfortunately. But that's what we're trying to figure out. So if you've got any photos or video of tidal surges from the king tide might want to look into it and uh, I'll see if I can find that link and maybe post it in the bottom of my video here but it's a beautiful night out here it's right about 50 degrees out it's not raining oh yes it's not raining but nice impromptu camping trip after an outdoor show kind of fitting Just a little report, more of a confession. Ever since about noon today, I've been having these pains on the top of my kidneys, like I'm about to pass a kidney stone and it's starting to work its way down. Uh, it's just starting to get worse and worse. I have drank about two liters of water. Actually, I've drank actually two liters of water today. And uh, not just today, in the last couple of hours. And it still hurts, but I am not peeing blood, so that's a good sign. 
we'll see. I'm still about three to four hours from home. Yeah. I always like doing this kind of stuff when I'm camping. You know, it's always the best thing. It's even more fun when you're in a canyon and there's no water. Then, you know, it's really cool then. It's really cool then. and owls. Freaking cool. Well, this morning here at the Great Shampoo Heritage Area, I had a really rough night. My back is just killing me. I thought it was my kidneys, but no, it's not my kidneys. My urine is perfectly clear. Just my back's out. Man, it's really hard putting on my shoes this morning. So I'm just gonna kick back around here for a little bit today and then see how it feels and probably go do a little fishing here on the Mackenzie a little later on. In case anybody's wondering, this is my heat source. This is the little buddy heater. It's catalytic, so you can run it indoors. It runs on propane. Little propane bottle right there out the back. Real simple setup. It actually has a attachment you can put a to the bottom of that propane tank to make a fit in a cup holder so it fits in your golf cart or your side by side or i guess if you got a big enough truck but that pan there it gets blazing hot and if you touch it you get burned instantly it's almost like a stove so you don't want to have this thing too close to anything that could catch fire but it gets so hot in my little little camper here that i have to run it with the door open a little bit that's the only drag about this heater it doesn't have a high low medium it's all the way on or all the way off so consequently you got about six to seven hours of burn time on that propane tank and then you're done and uh, hopefully you've warmed up your space because it needs to cool off again before you put another propane tank to it but it works very well very adequate um, I need to pick up a small electric unit in here so when I am at a campground like this I can use it rather than uh, the good old mr. body heater here but it's a good thing. It's it's. I've had this heater for, I don't know, 10 years now. It's warmed up tents. It's warmed up this camper. It's warmed up cabs. It's awesome. I can't recommend it high enough. They are a little pricey. I think this unit here you can get for about 50 bucks, 60 bucks, depending on where you find it at. And uh, they have a bigger one that I wouldn't mind getting because you can hook it up to a larger propane tank and let that baby run. Uh, that wouldn't be a bad option either for me here. But with the propane and this tight, confined, com, com, uh, can I speak English? Okay, but propane in a tight, confined space, you get really limited as far as uh, your motion and ability to move around it. But it's a great little heater. I do recommend it. Mine's getting kind of old, as you see there, because uh, it should be completely orange all the way around it. But it's working just fine. My poor vans. Just set up camp. They got all tore up, man. These are my dress shoes, man. Man, my dress shoes are all dirty. I'm gonna have to do some cleaning. Yep. My going to Sunday meetings, my Mar Mariam and, and buried them shoes. Yep. All the special occasions. All right, campsite A7. Nice and spacious camp. Got the fire pit here, picnic table. It's not bolted down, I think it should be right here. Kind of like next door is. Next door is a little nicer. They have a little brick pavers around the bottom of their picnic table. But I didn't care, last night I picked this spot because it was quick and easy. As you can see, still have not fixed the roof of my camper. So, threw this tarp up. Yeah, a little bit on the ghetto side. But hey, that's me, right? I'm a little bit on the ghetto side. So, giving you a little view around the other side here. And you can see it gave me a little, little back porch area. Just enough for my chair, my table, for my food, and it's my tackle box sitting there. Yeah, I'm thinking about going fishing. This holds open enough. Yeah, 
go on the camper. Taking a walk through the campground here, I found this really cool looking play area. Definitely unique enough to film. Looks like a fort coming up to it. Got this like great little basket feature here. Log with a rope swing on there or rope net. And when you can dump water in the top of this log, it drains down to the next log. Through that hole, down that channel, down that hole, and down at the bottom where another kid's waiting with a bucket. Pretty cool, they can go get the water right there out of the pond. Got this cool little climbing setup. Of course, there's a slide over there. Pretty cool little spot. River. Hear that owl? Maybe that's not an owl. I don't know what that is. This area is just freaking awesome, though. Can't imagine what it looks like with leaves and everything on this. I'm going to have to come back in the spring. Lots of bird life around here. Well, I used this trip as kind of a uh, scouting to see if I was ever to come back here to Champogue State Park, and I think I will. It's a pretty nice place, uh, very kid-friendly, lots of bike paths and hiking trials that go through all kinds of creeks and by the river. Really busy, really real close to Portland, so if you're in the Portland area looking for a place to get in the woods, this is the place. Come check it out. Seltzer Bay, Oregon, a very photographed spot on the coast. Devil's Churn. It's low tide, so it's not very spectacular at the moment. 